Yo, what is good? Welcome back to another video. It is your boy, Bud, and we have some AFL 23 news. Like the title does suggest, watch this before you do decide to purchase the game. Um, we do have some news that I feel a lot of you guys would like to know rather than actually buying the game and then finding out yourself. So before we do get into it, if you haven't already, make sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new, and I will be streaming the game. Uh, when it does release this Thursday. So yeah, let's get straight into it. So the big thing is that I thought you guys might want to know, a lot of you guys would play this actual game mode, but there will be no player career mode in AFL 23. Uh, so what that means is if you are a my career player, or if you do enjoy that mode in a video or sporting video game, unfortunately, it will not be making the final cut for AFL 23. And you may be wondering why. So the reason why, pro team, so ultimate team for AFL 23. Um, they've, they've thrown all their resources into that instead. Initially, they had a set list of legends that they were trying to get. Much more legends than what they initially anticipated have come forth and want to be involved in the game. So good news for pro team players, but for uh, yeah, player career mode, unfortunately, it will not be making the final cut and won't be in this game. It will possibly, depending if Big Ant do continue making AFL games, will be featured in future titles, but I guess we will wait and see on that. So yeah, straight into Pro Team. Like I said, much more legends will be added than we first initially thought, which is good news. There was a few questions regarding how they might be scanned. So we know that they do get scanned at their current state or current age. This is more based on so they can get the finer tune details such as bone structure of um, the scarring or stuff like that and they de-age them through a process and a lot of the older players probably need a bit of you know more touching up than the blokes that have recently retired but overall um, i'm assuming their player models will be based on their actual prime ability so if they dominated in whatever year then i'd assume that is what their player model will look like so assuming there are packs in afl pro team you don't have to purchase them you are able to earn rewards throughout that mode uh, which is good news because a lot of people will still purchase things in that mode but it's good to know that you can earn them so whether they have little mini games or um, I know 2K do it very well with challenges and if you complete certain challenges then you get rewards. I'm assuming if there are packs then they will include a player, a venue, maybe even some Guernseys logos uh, and possibly certain tactics that your team can play by. So for example you're not able to you know flood the back line unless you pack that or earn that as a reward and then you can equip that as your pro team um, tactic if that makes sense. We have some news so all the state leagues so VFL, Sample and Waffle from what I've heard um, they are all licensed for the player models they're obviously not scanned but they do have player likeness so they're not going to be perfect but we do know that they will have um, yeah licensed names and age and uh, details such as that so um, a nice feature to have in there. We find out some more things regarding the player archetypes. Some of the archetypes we can see live wire, spoiling, tagger, crumbing pressure, lockdown, big bodied, one out rebounding, lumbering ruckman, uh, accumulator, and backline general. So seems like there's a broad range of archetypes. I suppose it's kind of disappointing. Uh, there is no player career mode in the sense because then you could, you know, sort of make a certain build that you would like. But, um, yeah, obviously all the AFL or all the player models in the game now will have their own archetype, so they'll play based on that. So one last thing, I want to analyze some gameplay. So we've had some gameplay, which I'm sure you guys would have seen from other content creators, but we're just going to go over, analyze it, and see what I sort of noticed from it. So first things first, this footage is from Twisty, so credit to him there. But uh, So we have a spoil here which I do like, um, the spoiling looks elite. The football bounces on right angles, which um, I feel like Big Ant's done a very good job. I'm gonna touch base a bit more. We have a little bit more footage later on to show about that, but um, just the, the way the footy bounces on the ground and you know it can sort of go on right angles like we see here. In this next clip, we can see there's gonna be a lot of space in this game. Offensively, I think it's gonna be very good. Defensively, it's gonna be hard to stop. There might be a lot of scoring going back and forth, but we can see there's a lot of space and some good ball movement moving forward where he can get a mark and a set shot on goal. It's quite easy to recognize when he is sprinting and when he isn't. There's a lot of speed boosts, I suppose, visible when he's running down off halfback throughout the wing. So 
you can see he definitely picks his momentum up. So around the ground stoppages, we can see their different ruck animations um, compared to a regular center bounce ball up, which is good to see. So this one, there's some intercept marking going on. It looks very good for the intercept marking, so I'm pretty pleased with that, how they just come across in front and impact the contest. And then you can see the Tigers out here linking up, like I said, a lot of space to run and carry. Um, and then they work it inside 50. And then the Bulldogs player, uh, I'm not sure who it is, but he comes across in front, takes a nice intercept mark, and then the dogs go back in transition, um, which, yeah, it looks very good. You can see how the, the game sort of plays out, and then this tackle at the end of this sequence is um, a heaps better animation than what I mentioned in my last video. So it does look like they sort of might have fixed that up, um, but... Pretty well, yeah, Dusty's running into an open goal. He gets run down and drops the ball and the Bulldogs get a free kick. A nice animation there rather than where they just jolt back, like I said in my last video. The handball out of mid air. For the players that are able to do this, are going to be very, very elite at the game and hard to beat. The quick hands are phenomenal. Where your player jumps for the footy and he's able to release it before landing back on the ground is gonna be very hard to stop. Then another thing is when the Bulldogs play, he goes to kick it out. The Tigers player, uh, I think it's McIntosh, he gets in the way and pretty well smothers it, but I'm glad the ball didn't go through him and go out the back. Um, we'll get into the next one, so a nice little ruck contest win. Nice ball movement here by the Bulldogs, so like I said, the handballs are very quick, especially by the Bulldogs like they do play in real life, but it looks very nice. This is a nice passage play, handball backwards, kicked forward. Um, a nice fist coming across in front. I like how it's nice and open and then they run out and they have a shot on goal where Bailey Smith ends up kicking the goal and celebrates um, in good fashion. So yeah, this is what I was talking about, um, where the ball sort of just, it, it bounces and sits up. So it gets handballed out, out to towards the wing direction. You see the small bounces, it is hard to see with the red footy, but you can see the ball just bouncing out there and then it sits up for Bailey Smith here. You can see his player actually like sort of leap to collect the football, which I really like, and then he's able to hit the short target going forward. I also like how if you do take a mark, it doesn't really take um, control of your player, I suppose, so the animation allows you to keep moving forward if you want. I'm very impressed with this. The ball slowly deviates in the air, which, yeah, I don't know, just looks really good and looks very realistic, so I've done well with that. This intercept mark is probably the best one of the lot. So Robbie Tarrant comes across in front and we can see it was a nice intercept mark and then they can switch. That passage of play looks very realistic as well. And then again, another intercept mark. So forward intercept mark, he cuts it across in front. So sort of tell it's gonna be important that you have to, you know, get kind of good at your disposal. Otherwise you are able to get hurt on the other way. As we can see, a lot of these turnovers result in goals uh, occurring for the other team. So a good fist here out in the half back. Um, the spoiling looks elite as well, so another props to that. This is probably the best play I've seen from the AI in this whole video. So a little short kick inside 50, they turn, another kick, he handballs off immediately and then finds a target. Yuko Hagen goes back and he has a shot on goal here. So yeah, there's a little bit to take away from it. The game does look a lot more polished than what we have seen in previous videos. It's a good sign for sure. There's obviously going to be a day one patch once release date does come around so expect that uh, like I said the game drops 12.01 a.m. hopefully 12.01 a.m. on the 4th of May digitally and it will be available in stores on the 4th of May so yeah I hope you guys did enjoy this video um, make sure to leave a like subscribe if you are new and I'll see you guys in the next one